So the previous experiment that we just discussed helped us to understand that there is some type of factor existing in the cytoplasm of cells that have already entered M phase that if taken out of the cytoplasm has the ability to then stimulate another cell and cause that cell to enter M phase. This factor we classify as the MPF, the maturation promoting factor. So now what we want to do is try to figure out what is MPF. Is it a protein? Is it a hormone? Is it a signaling molecule? What exactly is MPF and how does it come to be? Okay. So the next series of experiments is going to help us figure out what is MPF. So in this next experiment that we're going to look at, what we do here, or what they did here, you can get a whole beaker full of them and throw sperm into the beaker with the eggs and you can watch them develop. And then you can extract and test different uh, proteins and track the fertilization progress of the eggs. So once you've stimulated fertilization, you can track the progress of the development of the eggs. And that's what we did here in this experiment. So we are going to stimulate a bunch of these egg cells to go through fertilization and we're going to track proteins that get made and are activated during fertilization. So in order to track the progress of various proteins within the egg cell after fertilization has been stimulated, we're going to use radioactive labeling. So for this experiment, what they did is they radioactively labeled amino acids. Nothing, no specific amino acids, just a bunch of amino acids were radioactively labeled. And this basically allowed us to track the movement of and development of proteins. Because obviously, amino acids come together to form proteins. And if these amino acids are radioactively labeled, then we can see what proteins are developed and actually track their movement during this fertilization process. So basically in order to actually visualize what proteins actually show up during fertilization, you have to run a gel. So we have here a protein gel of our radioactively labeled proteins. So in this gel image, we have three proteins that were discovered. We have protein C, protein B, and then another protein up top here that will get the name cyclin or cyclin. And we're going to see in just a second why it is called or how it got the name cyclin. So again, over so what this gel image is showing is three proteins that were again radioactively labeled and we tracked their progress during fertilization. So I'm not sure if you can see the timestamp on here, but at the very top of the gel, measured in minutes, is soon after fertilization, we tracked the movement of the proteins. So from a range of 26 minutes up to 136 minutes. Okay. And what you can see right off the bat is with proteins B and C, that there are dark lines or bands represented here across the board. You see these dark bands all the way throughout the entire time of fertilization from about 26 minutes, definitely well definitely 46 minutes they're more clear and they stay very dark and appear throughout the whole process of fertilization so from 46 minutes to 136 minutes. So what this tells us is that proteins B and C are somehow involved with fertilization or are part of the cytoplasm somehow of the cell but they're constant they are seen throughout the process of fertilization they do not degrade but now let's take a look at the cyclin bands so the bands for cyclin up top here so uh, between, again between 26 minutes and 46 minutes the first three lanes here we see the proteins start to develop and it's again pretty dark between then 46 
and 66 minutes, we have a solid dark band here. So cyclin B or cyclin is present during the early phase of fertilization here. So at the early parts of fertilization. But then as you go again over time, so now between minutes 76 and 86, the band for cyclin drops off or fades. But then it reappears again around minute 96 to about 116. We see the band for cyclin reappear. And then again, after a minute 116 to 136, this cyclin protein disappears again. So what this tells us and how this protein got its name cyclin is because this protein is fluctuating in concentration uh, during fertilization. So once these egg cells have been stimulated through fertilization, they're going through M phase. Okay? So any egg cell that gets fertilized by a sperm is going to enter mitosis or meiosis. Okay? Some type of M phase. And what we're gonna see so what we're seeing then is that cyclin, the protein cyclin, is literally cycling through M phase. So in the early parts of M phase, we see a high concentration of cyclin B. In the latter stages of M phase, we see the cyclin B drop off or disappear. And then it's the concentration again picks up again somewhere towards the end of fertilization. So throughout basically M phase, this protein cyclin is fluctuating. Okay? So it rises and falls during M phase. And again, M phase is either meiosis or mitosis. And mitosis is composed of prophase, anaphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And what we're going to actually start to see now is that this protein cyclin corresponds with those mitotic events. So we are going to see that cyclin rises during prophase, reaches its highest concentration during metaphase, and then in anaphase and telophase, we see cyclin drop off or get degraded. Okay? And that's best illustrated right here in this next experiment in this next series of experiments which is going to be illustrated by this graph here so right here what this graph represents is MPF activity and this cyclin protein concentration so again this is the same cyclin from the previous experiment okay? and what we're gonna so what we see right away in this experimental graph here is you have red lines, these red line is the MPF activity, the blue line, the dark blue line, is your cyclin B protein concentration. Another important factor here is the orange and blue bars here of the graph. These represent the mitotic events. The blue bars are the early parts of mitosis. So right here the blue bar here, the light blue one, is your prophase metaphase and your orange bar here is your late anaphase telophase uh, part of mitosis and as you can see both cyclin B concentration and MPF activity rise and fall throughout this M phase or throughout mitosis so again you add sperm this triggers fertilization and then what we see is that the MPF activity and cyclin concentration are rising in prophase up to metaphase, they peak, and then in anaphase, telophase, they both degrade. So what this graph starts to illustrate to us is that there might be or there must be some type of relationship between this protein cyclin B and MPF activity. So either cyclin B is helping to activate MPF activity or they're the same thing. So now this next series of experiments is going to help us understand 
the relationship between cyclin and MPS. 